know, I don't know about the rest of you. I don't know how long you've been in IT, but I've been in IT now about 20 years. Uh, most of my training has been uh, informal training. I haven't had a lot of uh, school experience, and I certainly didn't coming out of uh, high school. And uh, when I, I first got into computers by uh, getting into gaming, and it was text-based games, and so you'd connect to the network, and you would, you know, go north, go south, go... And uh, <clears throat> so... And then I needed to upgrade my computer, and so then I started upgrading my computer. But one of the things that's been consistent throughout uh, all that is that as soon as you start learning about computers and you get interested, you had to grab every piece of equipment that came your way. If you saw if somebody threw out a switch, man, you, it was yours. And then you'd take it home, and then you'd have wires running all over your house, and you'd have you know, computers sitting in every corner of the room. And um, so let alone the electricity and heat that they generate, but you, you, you never could really get a really good lab. You had to always uh, put things together. So I discovered, um, oh, I forgot to thank our sponsors. So thank you for letting us come and, and do some presentations. So the thing is, if you, if you want to learn uh, security, especially, but infrastructure as well, that it's always changing and we really need some way to reduce the barrier so that you don't have to buy, you know, a Cisco switch is $5,000, let's say. Well, if you don't have $5,000 to buy two Cisco switches, then you're going to have, you're, you know, you can't, you can't practice. You have to go somewhere that somebody else has them. And the, the other thing is in security, uh, as we've already talked about, it's very likely that if you start practicing your security skills on the general internet, you're going to get in trouble, either legally or someone else will catch you and make you wish you were sorry. Um, and then the other thing that is true is that you also have to work on your core skills. You have to be able to do system administration in Linux, or, but you might not have that ability. You might be a student and not have access to the, to the servers, or you might be a, uh, an employee and not have access to those resources. So we really need something that uh, basically is lower the barrier. So uh, I'm flipping through slides because I want to focus mostly on a demo and actually show you what, what you can do with it. But uh, So the cloud works perfectly for this. And uh, the, the development of shareable resources and virtual resources is just exploded. And um, a company called Ravello, who's now been bought by Oracle, is uh, front end for cloud resources. So you can do what you need, want to do, or what you might want to do without Ravello, but Ravello has, is a, basically a front end for designing patterns and labs and then deploying them quickly. And then uh, you can do whatever you need to do, save them, run them later time, um, or break, break them down, start them over again. It's a, it's a safe place uh, and a, a great front end to, uh, to the cloud. And, We'll go through the different scenarios that you can do. So you go to RavelloSystems.com. In the top right corner, you log in with a username and password. They have a two-week free trial without a credit card. They actually pay for your resources for two weeks. So anybody who wants to go out and try it, you can uh, get with me later if you want to today, or you can even go home and work on it. You start with a blank slate. There's no applications, but you can build and deploy those applications, and they're saved. Uh, there's also a library, so if you want to um, load your own systems up, you can load your own ISOs or your own virtual machines into the Ravello environment, save them and use them and play around with them. Um, the, t the examples that we're going to talk about today, there's a man-in-the-middle security playground, there's a Linux web security lab blueprint, and a lab just a straight test Linux security, uh, just the kernel and things like that. Uh, once you design a blueprint, and again, we'll see all of this in the demo, but once you design a blueprint, you can add it to your library, and then you can keep re redeploying that. Um, so you, you name it, and then you can uh, come back later and tweak it a little bit and have version control in your environments even. Uh, so the way most of the systems work is with uh, SSH keys. So you'll be creating keys and then you to log into the public. If, you, if your application has a public access, then you can log into the servers using SSH or 
Um, usually you can't log in uh, very easily as a username and password. So they shut that off so that it helps build your security. But you can configure it. With, you know, again, it's pretty configurable. But uh, so you'll want to keep your keys somewhere safe if you don't already have a good practice of keeping your keys safe. And then uh, some of the other cool features is that uh, when you start an application, it comes up and asks you how long you want to run, and you can choose never, or how long before you shut down. You can choose never, but um, it's by default it's two hours. So if and since you're being charged for resources uh, per hour, is if you let it run for two hours and you don't and you forget to shut it down, it'll shut it down itself. So that's another good feature because in the cloud, that's the one of the number one challenges is you start something up and forget it, and then it runs for a month, and then you get billed for a month. So it does shut it down automatically. And then the help files are really comprehensive. They've built a really good system that uh, can walk you through this. Okay. On to the fun part. So um, I'm going to stand over here and not, and not point to the screen so much because it's since I'm actually going to be doing stuff. But uh, you can stop me and ask questions if you want. I'll look, try and look up as much as I can. So I've already deployed, and you can see here, I've deployed uh, two applications. One of them is running. I started it this morning. And uh, the other one is stopped. But I'm going to go ahead and look for um, a new one to add. So... If I look at, so again, you can create your own with your own libraries, but I'm, if you look, there's the Ravello repo, or repo has lots and lots of blueprints. Um, and actually, how I got started with this is uh, in a, where I work, we've uh, switched our infrastructure from typical storage to Nutanix, hyper-converged infrastructure. And so we wanted, I, I wanted to play with Nutanix and actually get to figure out how, to, how it worked and and, uh, and so I, I found a link that took me to this site, and Nutanix builds their community uh, edition and puts it on here, so you can just drag and drop Nutanix on here and start learning how to use Nutanix, the commands for the CVMs and prisms and things like that. So you can, you can just scroll through these. There's a, one of the things that's cool is you can, there's a lab uh, from... And you can go to, the, a lot of the documentation is sometimes out on other sites like lab guides, but um, there's also Cisco CSRs. So if you're interested in learning Cisco and learning routing and switching, routing mostly, I haven't seen a virtual switch up here yet, but um, there's a Puppet lab deployment that's already configured. So if you were to, if you wanted to look at that blueprint, you click on it and it'll tell you it's got four VMs and how they're configured and about what the cost is to run. So, <clears throat> uh, my security labs, I've spent, I don't think I've ever spent more than $15 a month, but that's on the really high side because my security lab cost me about 53 cents to run. And we'll go back to the security lab and actually look what, what options are there. But once you pick a blueprint, and I'm gonna find a different one because I don't use Puppet that often. Oh, you can also search, I didn't, up here in the right hand side you can search for a so I'll, I'm not going to search because I just I'll use this security one so this is interesting it's got a Kali it's got um, Metasploit and Webgoat so if we look closer at that there are three VMs cost about 43 cents an hour and uh, you you just read through the different options and then this is they do tell you the credentials so if you need to uh, log into the system with the username and password. So once you decide, so I, I decide this is the one that I'm going to use, you add it to your library and it creates a copy. Nope, I already called it that. And you'll see that it adds to the library, and you can just click to open. So once you get in, once you get in a blueprint, this is the uh, canvas that you work on. So these, all these are three different VMs. You can tell what they've what they've been configured with, as far as networking by you know these little icons that they have. You can also come over here to the network tab, 
and it'll show you the network layout. It'll show you that it's, you know, what what uh, subnet it's going to pull IP addresses from. You could configure DHCP servers to do different things or DNS. So you can, there's, again, a lot of flexibility that you can play with here. Once you, uh, once you've uh, fin finished playing around, you can actually, if you get on a server, you can actually change things like, instead of two CPUs, uh, I gotta save it to my library because it's not a, it's because it's cu not custom. But so you can change how many CPUs you run, how much uh, memory, what type of platform you want to run it on. Uh, it doesn't really change what you see, but you can if you if you're if you're trying to use this for uh, production loads, which I don't recommend, but if, you, if you're trying to run a production load out here, you can optimize it for um, performance, and that costs more, but it, it gives you more resources and dedicates more uh, back-end processing to it. So um, you can also allow nested virtualization, which is kind of a new feature within ESX as well, where you, you, know, you have multiple virtual machines running inside, and they're running a at a virtual machine environment. So, um, once you get the blueprint the way you want the blueprint, then you can publish the application. And you click create application. Now this is the actual, This once I click create application, this is the application that's gonna be saved and the virtual machines created. So it's not like uh, some of the labs that you work with where you have to save everything you're doing and then save the config files out. This, these are virtual machines that are created and stored until you delete them. So once you get in and change configuration, it's, you know, it's just like a server. So you can get in, make configuration changes, save them and reboot them, shut them down and they work. Um, all of your data, all of your effort is stored. So I'm just going to go into the, the lab that, uh, have running already so and it takes it takes about five to ten minutes depending on how many virtual machines you have uh, set up to start all of them and configure all the networking and do all that so it's you know it takes a few minutes to get started but once you're started they're running and you have all the resources that you need so this particular lab I like because it's not actually there's no um, the Kali Linux box doesn't have access to from the internet, so it's just one box less likely to get hit. Um, the WordPress vulnerabilities are exposed to the internet, which you can, again, go in and change. So I, I use the console to log into the Kali Linux. I haven't got this one configured very far, so I still have to log in as root. Which we all know is a bad practice, but in Kali, it can be a, your friend because all of the tools run under root, so otherwise you're pseudoing a lot. So one of the things that you can do in here is in the security lab is you can um, all of the the nice thing about the Kali distro is that you can go into these applications and they're grouped together by the type of tool that they are. So you can, if you're learning and uh, you want to see what's on the network, having trouble moving the mouse, but that's probably because I'm just not patient enough. 
So you can see here the infamous NMAP, which we've already heard about today. Um, recon. I just used NetDiscover the other day. And so it walks you through, you know, what you need to do. And you can see on this uh, on this subnet that the Kali, Ax Kali Linux has access to, it can see uh, the other hosts that are available. So then you can open up an you know, Ice Weasel or or you, it, at this point you would use you know Nmap to start actually scanning the hosts and determining what kind of host it is and what what you need to access. But you can see that they've already provisioned uh, WordPress. Oh, I didn't turn on the, uh, hold on a second, I have, so I have uh, already configured this to do a web application analysis, so it's configured for a proxy server. Now, I think it should run. <laughs> and there's a network penetration testing log set up on uh, WordPress. So you can actually oops, see in the background that Paros is capturing the data and you can scroll through and actually look at the information that's coming back. But um, So that's the security lab. Once you're done with it, you can come back to it. You can individually shut down the machines. You can stop and restart them. Um, you can grant, so this has the feature for corporations that or large organizations. You can create sub-users and then you can grant users to, uh, access to the specific libraries or applications that you want them to have access to. So it is, uh, it is more flexible for that way. I haven't used any of those features, so I can't testify to how well they work, but <clears throat> Um, you can see also that you can create disk images in virtual machines. You can import them. And uh, once you get them imported, you can basically start configuring them and running them around. I, one of the example is I, I uh, keep an Ubuntu server up to date. So I just keep it up to date and then publish it. And then I can rapidly deploy uh, Ubuntu server and put more stuff on it, whatever I want to. They can connect to the internet outbound. So you can get the repositories and, and start testing and playing around. 
Yeah, from their virtual environment, they can connect outbound. Yeah. Yeah. And then, lastly, once you're done, you just need to shut down everything. You can actually shut down the application, and it'll shut down all of your VMs as well. You can also save it as a blueprint, so you can, re again, you make changes, save it, and go back in version control. But it's a really cheap and, or relatively cheap anyway, um, tool that lets you build your labs in the cloud. And you can build your, I, I don't, this isn't to preclude you from if you want to build labs in Amazon Web Secure or Amazon Web Services, you can go out there. They have a trial for, a, for basically you can get a year of free access if you use T2 micro instances and you can create instances till you're you know, blue in the face and do all the networking there. Um, and Azure has a $200 credit, but that goes pretty fast, so uh, I haven't had as much experience with Azure. And then uh, Google, Google's public cloud, um, I haven't had a lot of luck getting that to do just to do quick access. If you want to migrate workloads there, they have they have a lot of APIs and things that you can call and move entire workloads back and forth, but it's not as easy to use as a kind of this front end. So I guess I talk fast, but that's about all I have. I'll just open it up for questions. Although now they shut it down. Um, it, no, you can, it'll run x86 as well. You just have to, when you upload the image or find an image that's x, uh, that's 32 bit or 60, you know, depending on which one you want, then, uh, you just select that as an option in the CPU. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and you can also you can also do inbound. Yeah, so if Yeah, so there's a firewall there and you can but you can poke holes through it so you can get access to it from the internet so you don't have to like if you want to SSH directly to the host, you can use the key and poke a hole in for port 22. In the security lab, I deliberately leave it it can self-contain so that I'm not encouraging people to hit me um, so it's up to you how you want to use it but it's again for me it's one of these major leap forwards in innovation because you know I used to have to collect equipment and have a hundred computers in my house and now I don't have to have any I'm running it on my wife's computer to uh, be able to get on and do my lab work so anything else cool so what yeah So I haven't looked for, I would assume so, you would, if you upload an ISO, you could, I mean an image, you could, so you could create your own image of Windows, you'd have to license it yourself and then upload the virtual machine. I haven't seen any Windows environment labs yet, so I don't, I don't know uh, if they're just not out there or if people are deliberately avoiding putting them on Ravello for licensing. In Amazon, you can load Windows boxes, so they've got licensing worked out, so it's certainly possible, it's just. I don't know if they've ever addressed that question. Yeah, for sure. That's what I use a lot of is the 90 and 180 day licenses for Windows boxes. Thanks for your time.